Good morning, everybody. Very happy Mothering Sunday to you all. Uh, it's a strange day, actually, because for some people it's a very special day. It's a sad day because Mother's no longer with us. Or sad day because some people aren't mothers and perhaps would wish to be. And it's a sad day, too, because not every home is as we might wish. But today we celebrate the fact that when Jesus talked about heaven, he saw it like a home. So let's celebrate the qualities of hope, give thanks for them, and make sure that we are ready to share. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. We begin our worship with hymn number 128. Now thank we all our God with hearts and hands and voices. We stand to sing together. Forgive us that we listen to the voices of this world and ignore the one who endured all this and so much more and emerged triumphant, that we might not have to suffer so. Forgive us, Father, when we get distracted from our task. Forgive us those times when we try to be all things to all men and fail to be anything to anyone. 
So inspire us in this service, we pray. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Sing again, number 121, for the beauty of the earth. because of the very intensive specifications required. And I found it quite interesting when I first heard it 40 years ago, but I didn't realise that it was written by somebody called Irma Bombeck. This is an illustrated version of it. I hope you can hear it okay, but more than that, I hope you find it full correct. When the good Lord was creating mothers, he was into his sixth day of overtime when an angel appeared and said, You're doing a lot of fiddling around on this one. And the Lord said, Have you read the specs on this order? 
She has to be completely washable, but not plastic, have 180 movable parts, all replaceable, run on black coffee and leftovers, have a lap that disappears when she stands up, a kiss that can cure anything from a broken leg to a disappointed love affair, and six pairs of hands. The angel shook his head slowly and said, Six pairs of hands? No way. It's not the hands that are causing me problems, said the Lord. It's the three pairs of eyes that mothers have to have. That's on a standard model? asked the angel. The Lord nodded. One pair sees through closed doors when she asks, What are you kids doing in there? when she already knows. Another here in the back of her head that sees what she shouldn't but what she has to know. And of course, the ones here in the front that can look at a child when he goofs up and say, I understand and I love you without so much as uttering a word. Lord, said the angel, touching his sleeve gently, go to bed tomorrow. I can't, said the Lord. I'm so close to creating something so close to myself. Already I have one who heals herself when she is sick, can feed a family of six on one pound of hamburger, and get a nine-year-old to stand under a shower. The angel circled the model of a mother very slowly. It's too soft, he sighed. But she's tough, said the Lord excitedly. You can't imagine what this mother can do or endure. Can it think? Not only can it think, but it can reason and compromise, said the creator. Finally, the angel bent over and ran his finger across the cheek. There's a leak, he pronounced. I told you, you were trying to push too much into this model. It's not a leak, said the Lord. It's a tear. What's it for? It's for joy, sadness, disappointment, pain, loneliness, and pride. <laughs> you are a genius, said the angel. The Lord looked somber. I didn't put it there, he said. responsibly support us as a church for us to do our work and we'll take up if you brought it with you today the offering as we sing our next hymn it's number 544 and it's a very reflective one for mothering sunday through all the changing scenes of life we stand to sing together <coughs>
this envelope on here, which is uh, a higher and poor, because of course one of the things that we do do is provide a community centre for many people, so that's lovely. Um, the item for the food bank is for the literary among us, because it's Sainsbury's spaghetti letters. <laughs> Have fun with those later. But we stand with these financial gifts as well, because they represent Heavenly Father, accept all that we bring, and through these gifts, bring hope, peace, joy, and love to your world. For Jesus' sake. to see you and Michelle back again, <laughs> and who's leading our service, and for all those who are taking part today. And we think of Liz over there, go Liz, and love your mum. <laughs> now do please join us next door if you're able, after the service. We're in the side rooms, which, which is slightly warmer, and it's a chance to get to know one another a little bit better. So do please go across the room afterwards if you can. <coughs> Now, dates to note for this coming week on Tuesday. It would be wonderful to see this all together, as Terry said before, but toddlers, exercise group, and exercise challenge. And Wednesday is brigade, Thursday toddlers, and Friday is Friday friendship, and at 7.30 the youth club. Now, next Sunday, a service will be led by Shaw, but this will be followed by the church meeting at 11.45. The agendas are still available already for the deacons to give out, but if you haven't had one, do please ask and we'll supply one to you. Now, we're going into April now. This is the Warley Male Choir Concert on Saturday the 20th of April. Tickets are now available for this concert, £10 per adult, and it starts at 7 o'clock. But if Phil has the tickets, if you are able to come. <coughs> now, I understand there is one birthday this week, and I have asked permission from Edna Williams, whose birthday is on porch next Thursday, during the time able to announce it. So, we hope Edna you have a lovely day. And um, shall we sing happy birthday to you, please?
be acceptable in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. have taken too many funerals since Christmas. I know it comes with the territory and I know too that death, difficult as it is, usually comes at the right time. Not always, I hasten to add, and some of us know that painful experience. These funerals have made me look afresh it's a passage from the Bible whose words we often hear at funerals. The words of Jesus on the night before he died, when he said to his friends, Trust in God, trust also in me. And explains, In my Father's house there are many rooms, and I go to prepare a place for you. What has come across to me? is how these words are very significant for Mothering Sunday. Let me explain. Much as we enjoy those great paintings from the Middle Ages of soaring, trumpet-playing angels in great temples, the picture Jesus gives us of heaven is a much more homely place. For me, despite even the glorious sunsets and stormy seas showing something of the power of the divine, it's the home where we get, or at least should get, a glimpse of heaven. Sadly, not true for every home. Yet the glimpse of heaven that home gives us is a glimpse of true life, ultimately found in the sanctuary of our true heavenly home. Of course, the glimpse of heaven is offered not only by mothers. Home is a safe place of welcome for family, friends and strangers, and provided by those who care, whether they are parents or not, whether they are married or single, male or female, young or old. In this sermon, I want to think about how we are thankful for the glimpse of God's love in a home, appreciate how godly a home is and suggests it doesn't even have to be a building. <coughs> Here's one for the older ones here. Wherever I lay my hat, Paul Young sang. How did he carry on? That's my home. There's deep truth in that. Three qualities then of a home. And the first of these is that it is a safe place. We may think of sanctuary as a religious word, but in fact it's a place of safety anywhere. For some people, in dreadful situations, they may find sanctuary in a safe place because they are victims of domestic violence, or casualties of the economic greed of others, or the consequences of their own errors, or as refugees from war, to give but a few examples. And our own home is a sanctuary. It's a place where we can find forgiveness. It's a place where we find acceptance. It's a place where we begin to discover our true self and grow and find wisdom for the next stage of our journey. Of course, no home is perfect. Curious thing that we sometimes say to those closest to us the kind of things that we wouldn't dare say beyond our doors. That's where forgiveness and acceptance really do matter. It's where we should be safe. And as we reflect on our experience of home, one of the most important ingredients is the ingredient of loving kindness. That's not the cloying and slightly unreal romantic love. It is gutsy, hard-working, tear-inducing love, which comes from the depths of the souls of those who give it, even if it's sometimes given through gritted teeth. That reference to a tear 
at the end of the video is quite extraordinary. The advice from the book of Proverbs and in the letter to the Ephesians points to the importance of the commandment about love for parents. Indeed, in the letter to the Ephesians, Paul points out that this is the first of the Ten Commandments that he includes a promise. Almost, what's in it for me? It reminds us that honouring parents is for the wisdom that will help make us safe, secure, for whatever life might throw at us. Maybe long after they have gone. Teachers have to try and keep up with the latest idioms of pupils. Sadly, it's not usually possible. It was a bit confusing when a few years ago we went through a phase and a pupil would say, hey, that's bad. Which, of course, as you probably know, means that's really good. Or if it was described as well bad, then it was definitely really good. But another word that they would use was shorthand for giving someone approval. And that was the word safe. Ah, oh, miss, she's safe. I love the expression. When people meet, meet up with us, wherever we might be. Hopefully, maybe, get a glimpse of heaven. It might be right that they would be able to say of us, they're safe. Because our whole attitude means we offer sanctuary to people to take them forward and upward, safe place. And then, home is a sacred place. And that's in the proper sense of the word. Yes, a place where the divine, the godly, is present, but it has a dynamic meaning, not just a descriptive one. It's a place where goodness or godliness is sought and practiced. It was summarised by St Paul in Philippians 4 and quoted, as those of you who are here may remember, last week in David Tennant's sermon. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things, because there's a definition of what true sacredness means. A place of genuine welcome, respected for that. Like a place of worship, which may be dazzling or quite simple, it's the welcoming attitude which makes it sacred. For God is in the presence, is in the business of presence with his people. And that welcoming attitude matters more than how it's decorated. Indeed, sometimes the decorations can distract. The genuine is more sacred than the disingenuous. Some Victorian entrepreneurs, very visible in a church on Sundays, wickedly exploited their workers during the week. They were often described as Sunday Christians. They needed to take some of the holiness they found in church back home with them. The servanthood of the Christian faith, exemplified by Jesus and his sacrificial lifestyle, was an example of holiness, which we should find here and take home with us as well. Home is a sacred place. When God created mothers, was well, a fun piece in some ways, but you may remember that God is quoted as saying, I'm so close to creating someone just like myself. And there is something sacred about the love that should be found in another. No mum would claim to be perfect, of course. But there are interesting examples in Scripture where God is likened to the loving care of a mother, ready to give her all for those in her care. Isaiah, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion 
on the child she has born. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you, and you will be comforted over Jerusalem. Two examples from Isaiah. And then Jesus in Matthew saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you were not with me. A glimpse of heaven sees a home as a holy place, because the dynamic of sacred love is found. And finally, home is a limitless place. I have known one or two homes, not round here, perhaps you have as well, which are a bit like an impregnable castle. They have strong security on the gate, which only lets in like-minded people. It's very difficult to get a glimpse of heaven when the walls get in the way. And a barrier for love to be shared, especially if you've come from a different place, or have a different skin colour, or have limited resources, or hail from the wrong postcode. Such a fortress will deny others a glimpse of heaven. Mind you, the thick walls probably stop the love getting there in the first place. Yes, we know that life is unfair beyond the front door. But it's a poor attitude which says, I'm going to stay behind mine and keep safe. The work of a Christian, the work of a Christian church, is to be engaged in the mission of sharing love without limit, of offering hope and peace and purpose in the world. And we can only do so if we offer it in safety, so that we challenge unfairness where we find it. We speak truth to power in order to bring hope, to offer a glimpse of heaven wherever we go, beyond our home. And that home should then be a limitless place, wherever I lay my hat or my heart, that's my home. And those qualities need to be found there. Wherever you go, you can offer a sanctuary, the holiness of godliness and the safety of peace, even in a screaming world. And churches have a lesson to learn there as well. I think I've told you this story before. There's a lovely story about a very smart church. And there was a poor man who was trying to get in, and the steward at the door was ever so calm. But he said, I don't think I can let you in. Week after week used to come, and the steward, and he became quite good friends, but he said, and bless you, he put it like this, I don't think we're your sort of people. Look, one Sunday he had a flash of spirituality, and he said to the man, why don't you pray about it, and see what God says. And the next Sunday, the man turns up, the steward meets him, and he said, did you pray? The man said, yes. And did you get a reply from God? And he said, yes, I did. Oh, he said, what did God say? And he said, well, God said to me, yeah, I know that place. I can't get in either. <coughs> that's something that must never be said of us. That we cannot set limits to God's love. found so much of that in this fellowship, of people offering limitless love. And those glimpses of heaven which people will meet in the friendships that they find here are characteristic of that openness of the strong and unlimited love that we saw in the speck for a moment. I wonder if the challenge is for us to recognise that we have to be hosts and not simply enjoy being guests. I think we have to take seriously our church project supporting shelter, to recognise that there are too many without homes. The limitless home, which is the expression of Christian love, means we look out of our homes 
to offer the safety and sanctuary which others need. In the last couple of years, many have offered shelter to refugees from Ukraine. And that's been really special in so many ways. What imaginative things do we have to start embracing? We celebrate Mothering Sunday, not only by patting one another on the back, but taking the lessons it teaches us out through those doors and share safety. That is sacred and must be without limit. Let us pray. Today is a very special day, a day we remember our mothers and all they do and have done for us. Thank you for the mothers and the mother figures in this world and for the many ways you use them to lovingly guide others to you. Bless them and give them great joy and peace on this Mother and Sunday. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for a world where there is so much suffering and pain, where many people have nowhere to live, nowhere to call home, nowhere to feel safe and secure. For the world where many are driven from their homes through war, and for those whose lives will never be the same again because of the horrors they have witnessed. May the risen Christ bring hope and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who work for peace, for those who take enormous risks to help those who are victims of war, for those who sacrifice their own comfort and security for the sake of those with no one to care for them, <coughs> for those whose words and deeds bring hope to those crushed by their experiences of life, for those who give little thought to their own needs because they only see the hurt of others. May the living Christ fill them with his grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear We pray for anyone we know to be in particular need, those who are ill, anxious, depressed or afraid, those who are seeking guidance and the presence of God, for those whose hearts are breaking and those whose lives are filled with joy. We pray for ourselves and all that is concerning us now and for we must face tomorrow. May the risen Christ be with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those recovering from operations and those undergoing treatment. Let us now, in the quiet of our hearts, pray for those known to us who are troubled by bereavement, illness, or family problems. Have no fear, be in no doubt, you are not alone. Open your eyes to the presence of God. Open your ears to his word for you, and know he is guiding your feet. Receive his peace, know his presence, and be filled with the Spirit. In all you say and do, oh, sorry. in all you say and do and are, confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Let us now say the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, who be in thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we need to stop us from temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mighty is evil. We will take the daffodils down and please uh, take them with you with our love. And if there's somebody that you'd like to take them to somebody else, then uh, hang on a moment and we'll uh, make sure that the spares do that as well. My thanks to Liz, who's been playing for us today. Thank you very much. And we end our service with a great hymn about the quality that you find in a home. The quality of loving kindness. 
and we recognise its source. As we sing, love divine, all loves excelling, joy of heaven to earth come down. Number 559. <laughs> Grace of our Lord Jesus.